computer. Okay, so today we decided as a group to talk about the Good Samaritan and how I can, I'm trying to think of the best way to say it, and how uh, it is, has multiple angles to it, including a prophecy about the second coming, okay? And yes. so as we go through, it'll become more clear uh, why that is the case. Um, but maybe to get started, Zach, are you willing to read verse JST 26, uh, King James 25? Yeah. All the way at the bottom, Zach. Okay. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Darned lawyers. <laughs> yeah, so one thing about a lawyer, okay, is they know the law. Mm -hmm. So this is someone who knows Torah, and th this will come up. In, in a little bit, actually, I believe in the next verse, but this is someone who really thinks, I'll say thinks, they know Torah, okay? Mm -hmm. And he's trying to trip up, as in he's trying to tempt Yeshua, as mm -hmm. in he's trying to trip him up and make him um, make a mistake, okay? Right. So, uh, I'll read the next one. Yeshua said unto the lawyer, what is written in Torah? How readest thou? So there's a couple things here. One, um, it could just be how do you understand it? But also, um, there's a relation to um, how you read different words, like enemy and neighbor. Right. And the other thing that I'm seeing here is the heavy emphasis on written. How is it written in the law versus what is the oral tradition? Right, right. What is right. written in the law? How readest thou? Not how hearest thou, not. I agree. I agree. Um, I, yes. Um, but I do think, um, and perhaps that's why it's the readest thou, and that could be even more important. But I, I have come across, I haven't verified it, that neighbor and enemy are like the same constant constants. Um, so mm -hmm. that's something that needs to be verified. Um, either way, it's like, how do you understand it, right? Right. Yeah. Um, so, Ben, you want to read 27? And he, the lawyer, answering, said, Thou shalt love Yehote Elohim, thou shalt love Yehote Elohim with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy strength, with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. Yeah, uh, that sounds like a quote from Deuteronomy, right? That uh, sounds like a quote from both Leviticus and Deuteronomy. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Um... So, um, so this is showing that this is love God or Elohim and your neighbors is not something new, right? They're right. already well established, which is the two separations of the of Torah. Yeah, Yeshua didn't. Yeshua did not have to teach the lawyer this. Correct. Um, which means that on a certain level. He did know the law. To a certain degree, right? Mm -hmm. Um where a lot of the Jews they kind of knew it and kind of didn't at the same time, right? And then there were a lot of people who would get bogged down in the uh, nitty gritties and the specifics and what have you and forget what it was all about. And this lawyer knows he knows what it's about. And that's probably what makes this lawyer even more damned. Right, right, because he still tries to find excuses. 
right? Mm -hmm. Um, and so I'll read. Oh no, Zach, I think your turn. Uh, will you read twenty eight, Zach? Twenty nine slash twenty eight. And he said unto them, Thou hast answered right. Just do, and thou shalt live. So again, he, he, so it's he, that simple. You want eternal life? Keep do what's keep written. Your divisions of Torah. What he says is, if you want eternal life, do what's written. Oh, wait a minute. You mean you don't have to actually get new commandments on your knees? No. Unless Yeshua is a liar. If you want, if you want eternal life, do what's written. Yes, right, right. Um, and, and DC 59 says that also, right? They would yep. Uh, okay, uh, I'll read 30 slash 29. But okay. he willing to justify himself. So he knew oh, what the law was. I love that. I love that turn of phrase. He being willing to justify himself. But right. He knows, he knows what... Torah teaches, but here he's trying to find a way to wiggle out, right? Right, and, it, and it, he's finding, he's trying to cover himself. He's trying to find his own covering outside of Yeshua's ways. Correct. Or trying to twist Yeshua's ways and make it think that that is actually that way. But mm -hmm. anyways. Right. But ultimately, he is making him a law unto himself. Right, right. That's that's exactly what he's doing, uh, uh, and uh, we find out what happens to those in Doctrine and Covenants section eighty-eight, uh, verse thirty-five. Do you want to go look at those or stay here? Yeah, let's take a quick look. Let's take a quick gander, since we always get sidetracked on these things anyway. Yeah, that's fine. Let me get it up. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna pause. Okay, so we found those verses in Doctrine and Covenants section 88, uh, and this is talking about, um, this is talking about, because we were talking about previously how the lawyer's basically trying to make himself a law unto himself. Correct. Um, and so, the, and so I figured, I thought that these were applicable in this circumstance. So let's, uh, let's go into 88 verses 34 and 35. Now, verse 34 is what happens with those who live according to what is written. Again, verily I say unto you, that which is governed by law is also preserved, justified by law, and perfected and sanctified by the same. Wait, wait, wait a minute. We're... Now, another word, just because I know I, I have a post on this... Um... But uh, preserved uh, goes along with justified. You're right. Just like the firstborn of the children of Israel were preserved through the justification of Israel, the setting apart of Israel, um, their firstborn were preserved when the firstborn of Egypt were destroyed. Right. And so, and that, and in in that time when Israel was justified as a nation. That which breaketh a law, interesting that uh, the that uh, Yopa refers to um, those uh, to people who break the law is that, um, but uh, yeah, that which breaketh a law and abideth not by law but seeketh to become a law unto itself itself, it's like they're not they're not even uh, in his eyes they're not even people anymore. I uh, I wouldn't say that. I think maybe this is old grammar. Yeah, maybe yeah, it might be. It might just be. It might just be grammar. It might just be different ways of understanding. Yeah, I, I wouldn't. I, I anyways. I think that's going. A yeah. Far. So I I may be out of line there, uh, but and I probably am. Uh, that which breaketh the law. So those who break the law. They abide not by law, but seek to become a law unto themselves, willeth and willeth and willeth to abide in sin, and altogether abideth in sin, cannot be sanctified by law, neither by mercy, justice, or judgment. Nor judgment. Therefore they must remain filthy still. 
the end result of trying to be a law unto yourself is that you will remain filthy. You remain uncovered. You will remain in your naked, in that same awful naked state that Adam and Eve found themselves after the fall. Yeah. Uh, because you have sinned and so you can't pay the punishment. Right. Well, the punishment for sin is physical and spiritual death. So, right. Which means you're. Um, well, you right. know, and so, so while it may seem that under that some of the Torah, uh, that some of the Torah and some of the punishments according to Torah, they say may seem drastic when you consider that the wages of sin, any kind of sin, is death. There's actually a great deal of mercy in many of these punishments that allows you to repent, allow, allowing you time to repent. Yes. Um, okay, so let's go back. So that, so there was that. So let's go, yeah, heading back to, uh, heading back off this sidetrack. Uh, okay, so that's uh, 30 slash 29, because he's trying to justify himself as he's trying to find a way out of it, right? Mm-hmm. Because he knows what's there, but this is where they're trying to read the white space, right? Sorry. So he asks this question, and who is my neighbor? Which is a kind of question that you always hear from people who are reading the white space. Yeah, yeah. Um, they're, they're, they're trying to find ways out of it, right? Right. And so, and, and Yeshua answering said, a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. And fell among okay, so people. one point here, Jerusalem was uh, was up on a hill or higher than Jericho. So this this down part is showing the geography in that area. Just FYI, right? Um, and you'll see this in the Book of Mormon also. Yeah, this is a That's geographical the way that the Hebrews or the Jews think. This is a geographical thing. It is not meant to, I do not know that it is meant for spiritual commentary. Uh, it might. It like might there might be some. But it, because anyways, Jer that yeah, might Jer be going too far with this parable. So that yeah, that might be uh, the, the spiritual and the idea of spiritually going down from Zion to Jericho, the city on the border. It's it, it, probably a little too far. It's yeah, probably a little too far. Fine. It's not a big deal. It doesn't ruin anything one way or the other. So Right. It, it actually makes very little difference as to the meaning of the parable. Yeah. Uh, and is therefore superfluous. And it doesn't need to be talked about. Okay. And fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment, and wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. So he fell among thieves who stripped him of his covering. That that reminds me of the entire Christian church. Mm -hmm. And they wounded him. They caused him to sin, saying that the law was dead. And then departed, leaving him half dead. Uh, correct. I, I completely agree there. Because uh, when you sin, you're dead. But there's still some hope in them. And that's why they have to. But anyways, I completely agree yep. with that symbolic reading there. Okay. Yep. Uh, so uh, amazing, amazing what a little wine can do to help you see symbolism. <laughs> Zach, you want to read a 32 slash 31? And by chance there came down a certain priest that way and when he saw him he passed by on on the other side of the way so um one thing that we can get out of this is how uh, a priest someone who is supposed to be a man of god mm -hmm. right is was kind of walking the way but when it came to helping others he even left the way even more right now the other th the other thing that I see here. Now the 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 thing that I see here also 
Uh, I mean, I can kind of because the are the uh, yeah, well, no, because I don't think the priests. I don't think the priests have any justification for not touching a wounded man. I, okay, so let's get the, into this. It, the man has to be dead. Uh, yeah, or he's half dead. So they probably didn't know if he was dead or not. Okay, right. Uh, so they didn't want to take the chance, but they're leaving Jerusalem. So right, they're already the leaving case, Zion. They're. So, they're not they've already done their uh priestly duties so even if they had to do the cleansing it wouldn't hurt from their priestly duties right uh, right but on top of that um that's true it's more important to help people especially a dying person than to worry about the right right and I, I, rules i absolutely i absolutely agree i'm i'm just uh i'm also just pointing out the um and you're right to point out that there's a higher that there's prioritization that goes on here or should huh. well that i guess should go it is going it is going on there's just their priorities are screwed up <laughs> yeah their priorities are screwed up their priorities are actually not according to torah their, their priorities are according to um they're 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 placing the smaller things ahead of the weightier thing the weightier matters of the law like justice and mercy um, right uh and, and one thing also to keep in mind it is part of torah to uh take care of your neighbor which this parable is bringing out that the lawyer should have known already right and it doesn't matter whether that neighbor is loved or hated. Correct. And so this is showing an example of who's really keeping Torah better instead of trying to find ways out of it. Right? Instead of trying to find ways to break Torah while keeping Torah, as it were uh yeah which the jews were very good at <laughs> right um so which shows that they didn't really understand love yahweh and love everyone else right you might understand it on a head level memorized level but in their hearts they didn't understand it uh correct well this goes along uh their with their hearts i mean sorry with their lips uh, they profess, but their hearts are far. Right. 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 Uh, so now the, and so the le so the priest walks by on the other side of the road. Uh, I forget who's maybe it's Ben's turn. I forget. I'm sorry. You want to read? Or is it Zach? Oh, Zach, you want to read 33 slash 32? Zach. And likewise, a Levite. When he was at the place, came and looked upon him, and passed by on the, yeah, passed by on the other side of the way, where they desired in hearts that it might not be known that they had seen him. And that right there is damning. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is really exposing the hearts of the israelites at this time right and it was yeah. not good yeah the, uh, it, it, so it, you know it's uh well maybe if we don't pause while we walk around we it, they could say that we didn't see him <laughs> yeah but just the fact that you're changing your course a little bit shows that you actually saw them but anyways yeah um i do want to bring out another unrelated point to what we were trying to and really bring out, but it is here. Priest and Levite, there is a difference. Yes, um, the priests were a specific sub were a specific set within the Levites, or well, within the descendant of Levi. They were Aaron's sons. Um, whereas the any, anybody of the tribe of Levi was a Levite. Uh, the Levites could not do the sacrifices they could only they could do the work of the temple but not the sacrifices the themselves. supporting 
They could do the supporting work of the temple, yeah, but not the sacrifices themselves. Uh, correct, and that's just kind of what I wanted to pick it up. There, there is some difference there. So, mm -hmm. okay, uh, I think it's my time. I mean, my time, my turn. Sorry. Sure. Why not? And this actually starts getting into uh, some of the second and first coming prophecies that goes on here. Okay. Right. But a certain Samaritan. Now, a Samaritan is a Jewish person, uh, particularly of Manasseh, but also, I think it was Manasseh and Ephraim. It was, these are the descendants of those who stayed, those, of those uh, who were brought in, who were already mingled with Babylon. They were brought, that a priest was brought in to teach them the religion. Uh, he taught them the Torah according to the, le according to Samaria, which was already wrong. Uh, well, it's other not like the others got it right, as we're seeing here. But, but yeah, well, um, yeah, it, as, it, obvious, it, it, as it's obvious here. But the point is, is that there's a history here that goes back all the way to the destruction of, of the northern kingdom. Okay, okay. Uh, the main point I'm trying to get out here is they are of Joseph. Yes, they are. They are of the northern kingdom, which would make them Ephraim tend to make them Ephraimites, Manassites, etc. Right, right. I, I do think it's now. I do think there's a mix of the tribes, but I do think it was primarily Manasseh, as it was in Manasseh's land. Right. The interesting thing is, is that uh, just on just another tidbit. Hopefully, we don't get sidetracked on it. But um, it's stated that uh, the uh, old lady who saw Yeshua in the temple, and when he was eight, and when he was eight days old, I think. Mm -hmm. It was eight days. Yeah, she was a descendant of Asher. Okay. Just, just an interesting tidbit. I, it's not trying to prove anything. It's just something that you can read that's actually pretty cool, which means that some of the ten, very few, a very small percentage at that time of those of the ten tribes had not lost and not completely lost their identity. Uh, uh, correct. Correct. Yeah. But anyways, so Samaritans are of Joseph that have mixed with Gentiles, right? Right. Uh, and I think primarily Manasseh, but there's probably mostly a mix of Manasseh and Ephraim in there. Okay. Yeah, uh, I do believe that it's stated that um, the people of Ephraim went further north. Uh, yeah, their their land is further north, but not everybody stayed within those borders. But anyways, just no, as I'm talking example, about after, after the dispersion. Ash. After the dispersion. Well, even before the dispersion, but anyways. Yeah, but even but after the dispersion, there were leaders from Ephraim who were like, okay, let's um, let's go north to find a land where we can worship our God. Okay, so the main point here with the Samaritan is that they are of Joseph. Yeah. Uh, so Joseph of Egypt uh is a type of yeshua's first and uh second coming yes uh and you'll see that in the history in particular way it's worded the first portion is about his first coming um and the second portion is about the second coming okay yeah the first um, portion he is basically binding up the wounds uh, of the injured man. Correct. Which goes along the first coming. Right. The first coming is atonement to bind the wounds, which deals with sinning. Or not bind, yes. but uh, to heal. Sorry. I didn't yeah, to heal the wounds. That are, yes. Know what you're saying. <laughs> to, heal, to heal the sinning, which is what the atonement is about. Right? Um... And then in a little bit, 
there is the JST changes a little part that makes the second coming stuff more obvious, but you can still see it even without that. And we'll get into that as it comes up. But the big point on Samaritan is uh, a Samaritan is of Joseph. And yes. Joseph of Egypt has things to do with the first and the second coming, which this parable also deals with. Right. So yeah, the the thing of yeah, so the thing about Samaria is that it was set up by the by Ephraim. So that it's definitely Joseph. Right. They're definitely okay. Josephites. And as he journeyed, this uh Josephite, okay, came where he was and saw this uh, I think injured Jew. It was a Jew. He saw this injured Jew. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it doesn't actually say Jew, I think, but it's going to be an Israelite. He's uh, from Jeru He's from Jerusalem. Uh, 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 that doesn't just mean and and, uh, and Nephi called them called themselves called him and his people Jews from time to time. Uh, right, right. I'm I'm talking tribe, not just location. But anyways, yeah. right. Uh, so it depends on what angle you want to go on. I, I agree. right. So right. It depends on which angle you want to go. Right. On. So, anyways. Um, and he had compassion on him. So here is where we start seeing the first coming. Okay. Yes. Yeshua came and had compassion upon the Israelites. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, I, I I think it's Ben's turn. And went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine. He anointed him, and he, uh, yeah, good, and uh, and applied the atoning blood. Yeah, so that him on his own beast. and brought him to an inn to take care of him. So, bound up his wounds, that is uh, helping him with his sins. Yep. Pouring in oil, that's the Holy Spirit slash Torah. And the wine is the atonement. Yep. As, so, just uh, talking about the first ordinances of the gospel. I said only ordinances on purpose. Uh, part of that is repenting. Okay, so, that would be bounding up his wounds and then repenting that is pouring in the oil and wine. And the wine is the atonement that happens after that. Mm -hmm. Because to get the effects of the atonement, you first have to promise to repent. Now, it's interesting that in the articles of that in the original articles of faith that Joseph Smith actually put in the Wentworth letter that haven't and that weren't um, edited by the church later in the original articles of faith that it was only called ordinances yeah that's exactly what i was going off of thank you ben there were no such thing it wasn't the they were not mistaking ordinances for principles Yeah, um, and then I just want to say this one more time. He starts to repent, bounding up his wounds, and pouring pouring in the oil is promising to keep Torah and then getting the atonement. Okay, mm -hmm. now, setting him upon his own beast, that's the church. Yep. What happens after you are baptized? You join the church. And then brought him into his, and in his house, Gathered him up into the barn. Yeah. And then started preaching to him. Took care of him. Right? Mm -hmm. Um. So, there, I, there is the literal that's completely valid. But he's teaching deeper stuff here. Okay? Yes. Uh, okay. okay, Zach, 
Yeah, Zach's turn. So 36 slash 35, Zach. And on the morrow, when he departed, he took money and gave it to the host, and sent it to him, take care of him, take care of him, and whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. Now, uh, <laughs> I'll be honest here. Uh, because of the symbolism, I do like the two pence more, and I'll get why, but uh, with the rest of this, it's still there. But after Yeshua visited the Jews and taught them the gospel and uh, performed the atonement, he left. And he left for two days, okay, or two millennia. He's about to come back, right? Mm -hmm. um, Whatsoever so they I, I do like more. the two pence more than the money, but... I will say that the JST is more accurate. And whatsoever thou spendest more, I will. When I come again, I will repay thee. His reward is in his hands. Right, because um, this is a promise here to come back to take care of those who are still believing. Right. Yep. His reward is in his hands, and those who are saints will receive his reward. So this promise of coming back uh, goes with the second coming. Mm -hmm. Now, in the day, one pence was a daily's wage. Yeah. Two pence would be two days, and he comes back on the third. Now, but the JST does correct that and just says money, so... Um, someone added that, but I can still see it's about this, the second coming here is because he leaves and then comes back to take right. care of things. Right. So who now of these three thinkest thou was neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves? It was the one that, uh, bounded up his wounds, put oil on them. The one... It was the one who time. was talking to him. Yeah. It was the one that showed him the way that helped him to heal. And one the one who actually did good and not just talked good. But the interesting thing is is that he is that it is the one who is talking to that man, to that lawyer right there. Is he who was neighbor to those who to him who fell among the thieves. Yes, this is this parable is about Yeshua, his first coming and second coming. <laughs> and the old, and the man says, and he, he that showed mercy on him, then said Yeshua unto him, "Go and do likewise." Mercy, follow, come, follow me. Mercy is in the law. This is one thing that a lot of proponents of the law love to forget. I don't know if they love to forget or they just don't want to focus on it or whatnot. Um, but mercy is a very integral part of the law. Most everybody who is an opponent of the law loves to focus on stoning. And... Um... And love to do a and love to do away with any requirements that the law makes on us. Right. Uh, it, in fact, it's so integral that Yeshua stated, "If you want to be forgiven, you have to forgive." Yeah. So uh, he didn't just make that up. So while there are punishments in the law. Or certain activities that's if no that's if it goes to the judges and no amount of forgiveness can be shown no amount of once it goes once something is so bad that there is no redress for it that it has to go to the judges so uh i would say 
and this is according to me, but I, I think it makes sense because the gospel is about becoming, right? right? So is the law. And that is why mercy is an integral part of Torah mm -hmm. is because it's about becoming. And the thing that we have to remember about each other is that even those of us who mean well often don't know well. Yes. Um, so I do think there's one more verse. Oh, no, no, that was it, because that's a different one. Um, Go do thou likewise. That, to me, is the epitome. This is what he's constantly inviting us to do. Be like me. Yeah. So when people go around saying that those who think, those who believe that they can be like Yeshua are deceived, they're saying that Yeshua himself is a liar in extending the invitation. Uh, right. And the way to be like Yeshua is to keep Torah. Because yeah. uh, as first John tells, or no, John 1 tells us, I'm going to put a summary, that uh, Yeshua is the perfect personification of Torah, right, and the, and the other thing about that, right, the John one, John one, one, uh, John one one, yeah. Um, the other thing that I was, ah, oh, never mind. It totally slipped my mind. Really, okay. Moving on. All right. Well, so, but we can see here that this parable has portions of it that's about the first and the second coming in addition to everything else that's in it right that is that to me is cool yes and so and and of course there's the surface level of do good to your fellow men and we absolutely need to take care of each other oh yeah, yeah. in fact some states and, and, and locales actually have the Good Samaritan Law, which they believe is coming from the New Testament, but it actually comes from Torah. So, yeah, it's, uh, to me, it's a, uh, the tale of the, the parable of the Good Samaritan is a beautiful parable. And that it is so true, both on the basic level, on the basic application level, and also on the understand, and, and also in the way that it broadens your understanding. Mm -hmm. It broadens your understanding of Yeshua, his atonement. It teaches you that he's coming again. It's another witness. Another promise. And that promise that he comes with his reward in his hands. Right. Okay, with that, I'm going to pause. Oh, I paused the wrong thing. Yeah. So I hope you I hope you didn't feel like I was too intrusive. 